I have two money keepers for you. And I'm going to outline the reasons why I believe that these two money keeping tips really work back in a minute. Hey, good morning. Good morning. This is Jan from New York City. My channel name is Jan from New York City saves money. And I truly love, love, love helping people keep some more of their own hard earned money. Could that be you? Hopefully so. Listen, I have two wonderful tips. And I'm going to share with you why I believe that these tips work. Let's get started with the first one. Here is a wise philosophy, in my honest opinion, one, only and only spend money on the things that literally line up with your priorities, not your neighbor's priorities, not your sister's priorities, not your brother's priorities, your priorities. Example, why spend valuable time on stuff and or situations that you truly do not like? Example, pricey restaurants. If pricey restaurants are not your thing, well, then why eat there? I mean, right? Common sense, right? You would think, right? Also, are you uncomfortable, for example, let's say dating or keeping a friendship with a high maintenance type of individual in your life? If that makes you personally uncomfortable, then why are you continuing with that? Just saying, just saying, it's up to you. I'm just saying, just outlining a few things. Another thing, let's talk about buying books. If you don't like the idea or the thought of paying for a book these days, you could still go to the library. And the last time I checked, that's for free. So there are options out there. There are options. You got to take advantage of them. Keep in alignment with what you consider to be your priority. Next, money say money spent, excuse me, mindlessly is literally and actually money wasted. You know, many people throughout the course of a typical day, they literally spend money mindlessly. Example, just the habits, just little habits. And I know we've had the coffee talk habit to ad nauseum in some instances, but there's a reason for it because it's the truth. All right, so many times we use the coffee thing as an example. Could it be another thing that someone might be doing? Could it be a stop off after, let's say, after school or after work, picking up some candy or buying a bag of chips to tide you over till your dinner time? You do that once in a while. Okay, well, you know, that's an occasional thing, not a big deal. But when you find yourself doing this on a daily basis, not talking about the people, always know I'm not talking about the people that got their four walls paid off or, you know, they're living comfortably within their means. They don't have their, their savings goals are already being met. They have emergency funds. They're not in debt. Not talking about that person, talking about the person that struggles to make ends meet. Buying a dollar or two bag of chips Monday through Friday, thinking, well, I'm, I'm hungry. It's a long time before dinner, as opposed to not considering, well, okay, so you get a little hungry at that point in the day. There's no dispute about that. But who's to stop you from carrying, let's, I'm just using this as an example, a granola bar from home, a lot less expensive or a snack that you prepared that doesn't go bad. You could keep it in your purse or keep it in your bag and grab that to tide you over till dinner. I'm not disputing that you might feel hungry at a certain hour in the day. Yes, address that matter, but address that matter in a way that will not break the bank so that you can continue on with your goal. Therefore, it is a wise philosophy, like I said, in my honest opinion, to only spend money on the things that line up with your priorities. If your priority is to get out of debt right now, we don't have any business buying bags and bags of chips. Buy one big bag of chips and uh, pack up your own little individual bags from bags at home, if that's the case. I'm just saying, I'm just using that as an example. Now, the next thing to do, and this has to do with people that love to impulse shop, 
people that like to purchase things that really are not a necessity at the moment, and they are kind of sort of on the fence about this item. This could happen to anyone, anyone. Sometimes we're a little more vulnerable than others, and that's an emotional type of shopping. We've, you know, addressed that on various other shows in the past. No judgment. There's never any judgment about it because things happen. This is real life. But here's a good little trick, okay? Why don't you try or consider trying the 30-day trick on purchasing of items that are not necessarily needed, things that are not a necessity. All you have to do is like take your uh, little phone or if you prefer writing it down in your notebook, whatever way that you're most comfortable, write down a couple of things. They're not necessities, kind of sort of almost as if like a little bit of a wish list, if you will, type thing. Write those things down and then don't do anything about it. And of course, even in the afternoon, here we go again, goes the bird clock. Hello, birdie. <laughs> you are definitely following me. <laughs> ay, 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 amazing. However, getting back to this, write down those items. Could be one item, could be more than one item, whatever it is. Write it down in a notebook or in your phone. Don't visit those items for an entire month. If you have to mark your calendar or if you have to set some sort of reminder that in 30 days you are going to check to see if that item or items that you indicated are still a quote, end of quote, as necessary as you thought they were, let's say at the beginning of the month. To make matters easier, just say one month from now. Let's say it's February 3rd, right down on March 3rd to revisit that list. You see where I'm going with this? So that'll be about the 30 days or more. Wow, strange noises on the outside there. I have no clue what that was. <laughs> Hopefully my noise cancellation shut that out. Oh, it just heard some noises. Well, you know, when you're in the city, you're going to hear these crazy noises. Anyway, back to this, to the 30-day thing. So just look at it as one month to the next month and see. You might be really surprised to find out, boy, I really don't need that. What was I thinking one month ago? Where was my head at? And that's an interesting thing. We don't know where our mind was at at that time. Sometimes we just write things down to comfort us. Oh, we should make a purchase of this, that, and the other thing. Just as an emotional comfort, an emotionally comfort purchase. And then it's not so comforting if you use your charge card, for example. And then comes the bill and then you start scratching your head again saying, what on earth did I do? Wow, wow, wow. These are two important ideas to keep in your mind. So keep an alignment. This is the philosophy, keeping the alignment of importance when it comes to spending money and consider or just simply try the 30-day trick before you make a purchase. Write it down, come back, revisit it in about one month. You can mark your calendar. There you go. You know, these things are such common sense. It sounds common sense, but every one of us could forget. We could all forget. You know what? We should do a little bit more what this lady does. an amazing, fantastic day. Take good care of yourself and each other.